I'm Rafael from Nepata and I love listening to you today FM. My name is Ken Gudla and I'm from Australia but I'm part region from Rotraki and I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune in to Today FM in Nasilai Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Pasa. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin and I'm from Sambeto and I love Today FM. Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate. This is FBC News. Tonight, Fiji rugby and football teams depart for the Olympic Games. Government assures sugarcane farmers of quick fix to prob problems. And China becomes top foreign investor in Fiji. The Fiji Sevens rugby team and the national under-23 football teams departed this morning bound for the Rio Olympics in Brazil. As Vashnil Prasad reports, it will be a totally different ball game for the coaches of the two sports. The final goodbyes and emotions ran high as the two of the biggest contingents of the Rio Games left today. Rugby Sevens coach Ben Ryan says he is under immense pressure to deliver in Rio. The biggest task of all, um, although getting the boys off long loaves and sugar was a pretty tough task but uh, yeah it is so look we'll give it our best shot um, we haven't left any stone unturned in preparation we're working really hard uh, it's, it will get me where it gets me and uh, I know whether we win lose or draw I can um, I can hand on heart say that I've given everything for this and I think the boys have as well so um, this is about like I've said before this is sharpening the blade now and making sure that we don't get distracted and we stay on target. But it's totally different ball game for the Fiji football under 23 coach Frank Farina. He says winning a single game is not even in their minds right now. If we're realistic, Fiji, I mean, as in, in world football, when you talk about the level that we'll be playing at, you know, and, and the opponents will be playing South Korea, Mexico, Germany. So there's no real pressure on the boys, they've just got to give 100%. Both teams have separate missions, with Sevens Rugby the top bets for a medal. It's work to be done, I think, and I, I don't think any of them will really sit, think, you know, they won't, they won't fully appreciate what it's like going to Olympic Games until they step into the village and then see all the other athletes, uh, you know, all the other nations. I think that will hit home then and, the, and then the opening ceremony as well. It could be bitter, but it's the fact. Football's Olympians are the champions of the Oceania region, but coming from a sport which is ranked 187th in the world. Learn more and get experience. Um, be credible, you know, um, try and be competitive. Uh, that, that, that's the key for us, you know. You know, people, you can't compare us with Rugby Sevens who are world champions. While a goal is what expected from the Fiji 7s team, all the under-23 side needs to do is to perform to its best on their debut appearance in the Olympics. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Government has assured farmers that the state will work quickly to resolve issues pertaining to the sugar industry. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama and Minister for Economy Ayosai Kayum revealed this to more than 100 farmers in Nandi today. Ali Kimbia has the details. After three days of consultations in the Western Division, farmers have raised issues which will assist government to improve the sugar industry. But there are a few things like kind payment I would say. See, the kind payment we receive in one and a half years, like last year's payment, I get it by October this year, the last payment. The price of cane is so less, you know, the uh, cost of producing a ton of sugar, uh, sugar cane is, uh, you know, nearly where the price of cane is. So what do the farmers get? With a projected growth of sugar cane production in the coming years, the Fiji Cane Growers Association says there are loopholes in the industry which needs to be looked at immediately. While speaking to farmers in Nandi today, Prime Minister Vorengen Bainimarama and Minister for Economy, Aya Said Kayum, have stated that government will do all it can to turn around the sugar industry. But to tell you that most of the problems that you talked about, we've, we've, uh, we've talked about in the last couple of days. And uh, I've said that uh, my permanent secretaries will... Uh, will uh, uh, now, with the new chairman, uh, try and sort out the issues that we've had problems with in the last six months. 
do you talk to all the farmers? They're generally they're not interested in you know the, the politics of it. They're generally interested in having their own day-to-day -day problem solved. That's what they want. Prime Minister Burengembaini Marama has assured farmers that the sugar industry is here to stay and they are also looking at ways to improve on how FSC deals with the people in the industry. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. China is now the leading country for foreign investors in Fiji. This was confirmed by Minister of Industry and Trade Fayaz Koya while addressing a high-power delegation from China. Some of these business people count their investments in the billions and are listed in the global list of the top 500 corporations in the world. Their average spend in new investments runs into the hundreds of millions of dollars. Such has been the confidence of the Chinese investors in the Fijian economy in the past few years that China currently is our biggest source of foreign direct investment. I therefore urge you all to seize this opportunity and join the many investors that have significantly benefit, benefited from the profitable ventures and in turn have also contributed to the Fijian economy. Fiji's imports from China have increased from $210 million in 2010 to a staggering $623 million in 2014. Our exports, however, aren't so encouraging. Fijian products sold to China in 2010 totaled $5 million. Two years ago, it stood at around $37 million. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we encourage and look forward to strengthening our relationship with China and connecting businesses and encouraging trade between the two countries. Furthermore, Fiji presents an opportunity to investors and the opportunity to invest, invest in a country that is strategically located in the South Pacific and is the hub in the region. Which provides Koya has highlighted another point. China made up 41% of all foreign investors last year, but its value was only 18% of total investments. The delegation has come over for bilateral talks because it's seen potential in Fiji. The government is hoping these sentiments will result in concrete investments. Edwin Nunn, FBC News. Surveying Itauke land and marking village boundaries are two main projects of the Itauke Affairs Ministry. According to the Permanent Secretary for Itauke Affairs, Naipote Katani Tambua, without those two initiatives, land leases could not be issued for any development purposes. Savara Tambua has more. Permanent Secretary Nepote Katani Tambua says approval of more than 60% of a land owning unit is the main requirement for any development work to be undertaken on any Itauke land. Any developer that needs to come in, we would like to make sure that they are talking to the right owners or land owning units. So uh, what the ministry is doing now is just uh, empowering the Itauke to have the relevant uh, land being surveyed well demarcated from the neighboring landowners. It's also for peaceful uh, society. According to Katuni a similar process also provides for the land bank. We have the land bank, which also provides the same services with the LTB. Uh, but at a, at a better benefit to landowners, because uh, most of the administration costs are not uh, taken by the Ministry of Lands. The bulk of the lease money is being given to the landowners for, for themselves to share. The Ministry has already conducted land surveys for the 12 provinces and surveying of the last two is underway. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. Police continue to work with Interpol as they investigate into the apparent murder of two Russian nationals, Yuri and Natalia Shipulin. While only dismembered remains of the deceased bodies were found at Notondola Beach in Singatoka, police continue to monitor any other gruesome finds linked to the case. A head and two pairs of feet were found at the famous tourist spot. They were DNA tested and matched to the Russians who were reported missing in June. Uh, through Interpol, we've, uh, we've been in contact eh, uh, with uh, the Russian authorities who, uh, who've also uh, gotten in contact with the relatives. And that's how DNA samples uh, came across uh, to, to us, or we sent across the samples from here for comparison. So Interpol has been the, uh, uh, the mechanism that uh, has been utilized uh, for contact with the Russian authorities and also uh, the families. Police are treating the Shipulin deaths as murder. Coming up on FBC News, President highlights dangers of NCDs and its impact on the country. 
and famous Bollywood musician Mika Singh to hold concerts in Fiji. Stay with us. Bula FM number two and seri. Welcome back. This is FBC News. Fiji is likely to lose 16.4% effective labor force by 2040 due to early deaths from non-communicable diseases. The revelations were made by President Major General Retired Chiochi Konrote during his meeting with the middle management officials of the Ministry of Health and Medical Services. Pranita Prakash with the story. The World Bank in its latest report on Fiji's health status says for the past 30 years, an increasing trend in diabetes, high blood pressure and obesity has been noted. The president says these statistics are alarming. We will all agree that Fiji's status of NCD is extremely unfavorable. They not only project a very poor image of our nation, but they importantly reflect a trend of very bad decision making on the part of all of us. As Fiji's champion in the fight against NCDs, he has urged everyone to make the right dietary choices and to maintain a healthy lifestyle. A state and desired outcome must be to have a healthy, productive, prosperous, sustainable and happy nation. To achieve this, our quest must be to eliminate NCDs and to promote wellness. Fiji is also ranked as the second highest nation in the world with deaths caused by diabetes. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Police are appealing to the public for information on the Rajneel Singh case from last year. Singh alleged that he was kidnapped outside of the Lautoka police station after he filed a report on suspected tre treasonous emails he found at his internet shop. The emails reportedly had information of an assassination plot against members of the government. Singh alleges he was blindfolded, tortured and beaten up before being dumped in a pine forest outside of the city. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningilio says they have no leads. Um. We haven't been able to get any more information to, uh, to further progress uh, in, re in regards to that case. Eh? But we, we're still uh, calling on the community if they have any information in regards to uh, uh, how Rajneel was treated way back then. We would uh, gladly receive any information in regards to that so we can continue to pursue those who mattered out uh, that, uh, those injuries on Rajneel. The emails, which were subsequently leaked on social media, reportedly planned a murderous attack on Parliament. The National Disaster Management Office is working on overcoming challenges faced by different stakeholders following the onslaught of tropical cyclone Winston in February. Assistant Minister for National Disaster Management, Joeli Dawaki, says the ministry is currently working to make improvements for the future as tropical cyclone Winston showed them a number of loopholes. Sainiani Boiler reports. Understanding the biggest lessons learned in preparing for, responding to, and recovering from tropical cyclone Winston that decimated parts of the country in February this year was the main focus of today's workshop. The operation has come to an end and it is critical that we get together to review and also to discuss the lessons that we have learned during the whole operation. This is to look at what we have done well what we didn't do well and what can be improved before the next disaster operation. European Union Pacific Delegation Head Christoph Wagner says financially supporting the workshop will lead to real and tangible outcomes. Um, the European Union, for, for us, obviously, we, we, we saw this as an opportunity to help Fiji very quickly. So we, the first step was we redirected existing funds and uh, worked with project partners, like with the Pacific community, uh, and then we mobilized additional funds. 
and some of this went through humanitarian aid, which also came in quickly, and others is more longer in terms of now we have 10 million euros, about 23 million Fiji dollars, which will give the government to help the reconstruction efforts. Wagner says the European Union has plans in place to help the agriculture sector. He adds they are fully committed to help Fiji becoming more resilient to natural disasters. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. The Ministry of Local Government has received requests to expand Nangara Trading Centre on the island of Taviyuni and declare it a town. Taviyuni's main commercial centre, Nangara, is slowly growing with a few supermarkets, retail stores, eateries, bank and small makeshift markets. Local Government Minister Parvin Bala earlier told FBC News any place can be made into a town but it is important that the right facilities are available. FBC News understands an issue that stands in the way of progress is the availability of land. The centre is located between the two settlements, Nangara and Riketi. The issue was raised with the Prime Minister during his visit to the the island late last year. Indian singer, songwriter, composer and performer Mika Singh is coming to Fiji in October. Singh is currently one of the top entertainers in Bollywood and also appears in comedy shows. Some of his hits include Dika Chika from the movie Ready, Tumera Hero from Desi Boys and Char Sao Chalis Vault from the latest movie Sultan. FBC Radio Programs manager Shami Lochan Lal says the Mirchi FM Mika Singh show will be a hit among all groups. We know what the audience wants, we know what our fans want, So, and they've been starved for years, so it was timely to say, okay, we need someone to entertain our group in a crowd, uh, to bring an artist to Fiji who's very, very, very popular, an artist who can draw a crowd, and none other than Mika Singh. Sing's two stage shows will be the 19th and 20th of October in Suva and Nandi, respectively. Sports is up next, here's Jamie with all the very latest. Nakateki and good evening. Coming up in sports, fans turn out in numbers to send off Fiji 17. And we talk to two Fiji football players bound for Rio. They send more after the break. Bula, I'm Duri from Nasinu Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Rocky Rocky. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Ardent Fiji 7's fans gathered in numbers to farewell their national heroes at the Nandi International Airport today. And before heading off to Chile, Captain Osea Colinisau thanked the Fiji supporters for being with the team throughout their journey. Vasnil Prasad reports. Families, friends and the fans all came together to bid farewell to their national heroes before they departed for Mission Rio. Fiji 7's captain, Osea Kolinisau, again pleading for the support of the nation, knowing the road to gold will be tough. Uh, tremendous support in uh, coming on all the way from uprising, uh, just seeing the flags and uh, seeing the uh, people here. I think uh, it feels like uh, a normal tournament, but I think it will start to begin when we get uh, into Chile and into Rio. For the fans, it was a moment to capture memories with their heroes. And we here, the crowds in uh, Nandi, we wish them all the best. And especially to our boy in Karatonga, Chatsever Malu, I know he will do the best of his best. I just want to give thanks to Masi Besi, the Kwanga. He's my best of the Fiji team. Moments like this will not be forgotten by the players, but they remain focused on the job on hand. I think we'll be working six weeks of hard training. Now it's time to taper down and just try and get everybody fresh uh, on our way to Rio. The Fiji 7's team departed Nandi with high hopes. The fans also present here were excited and are looking forward for the first ever gold medal from Brazil to Fiji. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. 
Meanwhile, Fiji's Olympic football team also departed Nandi International today and will be the first contingent from Team Fiji to arrive in Brazil. Ready to make their first appearance on the Olympic football scene, FBC Sports caught up with, the two, with two players on the opposite ends of their playing careers. Vastel Prasad with the story. The 22-year-old Joseph Turangabedi is now chasing his dream after being recalled in the team. The New Zealand-based player says it was a miracle call after 223 players were dropped from the side last week. When I heard the news that I wasn't in the final squad, uh, Frank uh, was talking to me. Um, he, to he told me uh, there was 13 days left and anything within that period could happen. You know, And he told me keep believing. And uh, the day after, at night, uh, I got the phone call from Reverend Nish, telling me the good news that uh, they want me back in camp. There is more to achieve for him than making his debut for the national team. Sia, the captain for the seven team, said uh, his father said, uh, just do our best, you know. That's all uh, Fiji people are asking is to, uh, for us players to do our best. But it's a different chapter for veteran goalkeeper and vice captain Simeone Tamanisao. Uh, we've mentioned to the players that uh, this is a lifetime opportunity and uh, it won't come back. And uh, for them to savor the moment and uh, give it a chance to represent the country in uh, these stages is indeed an honor for any athlete. Also getting the well wishes from his loved ones was Captain Roy Krishna. The stri striker hopes his team could prove all odds wrong next week. They are to arrive in Salvador, Brazil late in the night tomorrow before heading for its first training run on Thursday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Nasinu Secondary School is out to end its barren run in the Coke Zero Deans Rugby Competition. The Kenoya Bay School has never won the Deans title and the quest to end this unwanted drought continues this Saturday when it takes on Duvu College in the quarterfinals. Meli Tavanga has more. The Sinu has never won the under-18 title but want to change that in 2016. Uh, we've seen Duvu as uh, the top team coming from the Western Division and uh, we respect them since uh, um, uh, Duvu College, uh, they've got academy and uh, through the guidance of the Nanronga Rugby Union and uh, we've seen that uh, that is their strength and uh, at the moment uh, the remnants under 18, we've, uh, we, we, we've focused on, to, on to how to tackle uh, Duvu College. Coach Daniel Vagamode says they will have to do away with playing catch-up rugby if they are to pose a threat to other schools in the competition. Yeah, since um, um, the pattern that they are using most of the time, they've been using a, a white game, so that is where we are focusing on. And, um, and uh, the, other, the other strength that they have um, is that uh, most of the things, they, uh, they will change it throughout this week. Uh, so they can come and uh, compete with, uh, with uh, Nasinu uh, this week. Nasinu will take on Duvu College at 11 a.m. Saturday at the ANZ Stadium. Although Nasinu was ranked second in the Eastern Division Secondary School Rugby competition, while Duvu College ranked number one in the Western Division, the Kinoya Bay School side believed they would not be deterred. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. Forty boxers will take part in the Western Boxing Rumble in Singatoka next Saturday. This is expected to be one of the biggest amateur promotions, with all boxers to walk away with a prize of some sort at the end of the evening. And with a large number of bouts lined up for the event, organizers anticipate a huge turnout from boxing fans. Our first fight, we had six, we had raced with 69 fighters, and uh, we had uh, more than 1,000 people coming over to watch the fight. And uh, this uh, coming uh, 6th Saturday, I think we'll be having more fighters. But the only thing here is like we will be giving 40 boxes will be taking the ring because we need only 20 fights. The event will be held next Saturday at Duvu Top. That's it from Sports Tonight. Business is up next with Jackie. Please Global Limited has achieved revenue and profit growth over the first half of the 2016 financial year. The gross income is $850,729 for the first six months of 2016, while the corresponding period in 2015 was $601,389. The company recorded a net profit after tax of $536,188. This is an increase on the sixth month period ending 30th June 2015, which was at $330,000. 
$33,671. Earnings per share are nine cents up compared to 2015 half year, which was on six cents. Chairman Warwick Please says the board is pleased with the progress of the company and its future projections. The weather was mostly settled across the nation. The east had early morning showers, which gradually cleared to a fine day. Temperatures were pretty much the same in most centers. Bar recorded the warmest spot at 33 degrees, while Suva and Sabu Sabu were the coolest at 28. The rest altered in the higher 20s. Tomorrow's weather pattern will remain much the same as today, with scattered afternoon showers later in the day or overnight. And looking further ahead to Thursday, the sunny order is expected to continue with brief shower intervals. At sea, east to south, these winds gailing up to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping the main stories for tonight, the Fiji Rugby Sevens and football teams have departed the country for the Olympic Games. Government has assured sugarcane farmers of quick fix to problems. And China becomes top foreign investor in Fiji. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to our poll question for this week, we are asking... Can any other sports apart from Rugby Sevens win an Olympic medal? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night. I'm Urian Khan Gurbo Talebuke. जैसे फेस्टिवल एग्रेट है गर्भों में उसी तरह मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है गर्भों में एम एलिन लटका में मिर्ची एफएम को लॉक कर दिया जाए मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट हम नकाशी से सहमाने हमारे फेस्टिवल जैसे नंबर वन है वैसे मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है माय नेम इज दिनेश हम लेंडी में काम करता है स्लीपिंग 